بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصبح بدا من طلعته والليل دجا من وفرته الله الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وخاتم النبيين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I only have 11 minutes so I'll try to be as precise and as brief as possible the question, can a 7th century man be a role model in the 21st century? Like Professor Jamal Badawi before me, I will obviously be addressing this topic from a Muslim perspective as a believer in the Holy Quran and as a follower of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I'll try to answer this question mainly from a Muslim perspective but then later also moving on very briefly to a non-Muslim perspective. One, to assess whether this 7th century man can be a viable and successful role model in the 21st century, I believe we need to look at the conditions when he appeared in Arabia and the transformation that took place and what he so successfully and miraculously achieved. If those few years can serve as an example, then I believe not just the 21st century with all its challenges and its problems, but any era, any century in history or in the future, despite the challenges and the problems inherent therein, will prove to be fertile ground to hold and herald the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a successful role model. In Arabia, before the arrival of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the country was ungovernable. The Persian Empire and the Roman Empire to the northeast and the northwest, two mighty empires at the time, they considered the Arabian Peninsula to be a backwater area, not worthy of governing. And despite nominally staking a claim on the peninsula, neither of these empires, or even the Abyssinian Empire at the time, actually tried to enforce the claim. They considered Arabia to be an ungovernable area, a place that had no resources, that could yield nothing, and whose people were just a bunch of wild Bedouin tribes who were engaged in internecine warfare that just decimated the entire population. They saw nothing and no one in the whole of Arabia. Arabia was full of idolatry. Writing and reading was a rare availability. Most people were illiterate and unlettered. There was, it wasn't a major center of civilization, no, hardly any history, no major center of trade, commerce, nothing. Mecca was just a sleepy desert town if it can be described as such. In that sleepy desert town of Mecca was born a child without a father. And if we just trace his life very briefly and in a, con in a contemporary context try to understand what a child of such a description, background and history can achieve. A child born without a father, having lost his mother at the age of six, not having lived with his mother for approximately four years, three, two, approximately three years, losing the mother at the age of six, losing the grandfather at the age of eight, moving, on, moving in with an uncle who couldn't provide for him, and therefore at the tender young age of ten, he began working as a shepherd himself, earning money, and living like that, not marrying till the age of 25 and not to a young virgin but rather to a woman twice widowed with children from two previous marriages 15 years his senior all the way up to the age of 40 the Prophet 
in, despite being a brilliant and a wonderful individual, in other ways was unassuming to the onlooker and could not have had a promising future in the manner that he had eventually achieved. A child that's born without a father loses its mother and then moves from one home to the other, being deprived of the father's care and attention, the mother's love, etc., a family unit, no brothers and sisters, and then facing hostility from one's own family, immediate family, and then from an entire city and an entire nation. Living in a time when idolatry was prevalent, yet this child did not believe in idolatry. From a very young age, disturbed by the idolatry around him, becomes a monotheist and so on, no education, no center of civilization. In fact, he couldn't read or write himself. We don't have time, but if we trace the history and the life of this man, beginning from his birth all the way till the age of 40, it was very unassuming, and yet within a short while. In a place like Arabia, this same man changed an entire civilization. He destroyed the former religions of idolatry and oppression. He changed the whole society. He, despite all the opposition and despite his meek, humble and soft-natured character, conquered and subjugated the whole of Arabia. And within a few years after him, his legacy, his prophethood, his teachings and his religion spread the world over so much so that today we find ourselves here discussing him even 14 centuries on. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was able to achieve all of that in the space of a meager 10 years. At a time when there were no modern facilities available, no amenities available, despite living a desert existence, in 10 years the Prophet sallallahu changed religions, ideas, philosophies, communities, societies, entire countries. Only a Prophet of Allah could have achieved that, despite having the childhood and the history that I just described. That is a miraculous achievement. And from a Muslim perspective, only a Muslim could achieve that. Only a prophet of, sorry, only a prophet of Allah could have achieved that. And what does the Holy Quran say about the continuity of the Prophet ﷺ's teachings and their suitability for any era, for any period, for any location? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا الَّذِي لَهُمُ الْكُسْسَمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Say, O Prophet of Allah, that O mankind, O people, all of you, I am Allah's messenger to you all. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا In another verse, Allah says, and we have not sent you, but as a bearer of glad tidings and a warner for all the people. In another verse, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have not sent you but as a mercy for the world. The Prophet ﷺ as a person and his teachings and his legacy and his sunnah, for we cannot detach any of these from his personality. All of these are a mercy, not just for the time of the Prophet ﷺ, but till the day of judgment, for, for the future, for all times. Whichever teaching you take, Allah's law, repeatedly Allah says, Allah wishes ease and comforts for you, Allah does not wish difficulty for you. Throughout the Quran, in, in similar light, Allah has mentioned about the laws of Islam and the teachings of the Prophet wasallam that they are a mercy, a comfort, a concession, the lightening of our burden. In fact, in one verse, he says, Allah says, those who follow the unlettered messenger and prophet, whose mention they find in their scriptures before them, in the Torah and in the Injil of the Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. He enjoins them to good, forbids them from evil. And he makes halal and lawful for them the pure things. And makes haram and unlawful for them the impure things. And he removes their burden from them. And those shackles that bound them. This is a description of the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ of the Qur'an. They unfetter our shackles. They remove our burdens. They lighten our load. That's the mercy and the compassion in his personality and in his teachings. As Muslims, we believe that such a law, such 
a way of life, such a sunnah, such teachings can serve as a mercy not only for the 7th century and not only for the 21st century but for all mankind for eternity and he as a person would be regarded as the most successful role model and that leads me to, we don't have time we don't have time, I'll move on to the non-Muslim perspective even from a purely secular non-religious perspective as Imam Jawahiri just mentioned that Im impartial, honest, just historians and academics who have studied the life of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and in the context of the entire history of mankind, they will come to the inevitable conclusion that without doubt he was and remains the most single, influential, powerful and pervasive individual in the history of mankind. He commands respect and love, the awe and reverence, and the tears and the emotions of billions before, now, and in the future. And we hail him as our supreme example and role model. And it's not just Muslims, but even non-Muslims. I end with just quoting two individuals. Many people have said much about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just as was mentioned about Michael Hart, who drew up a list of the hundred most influential people who placed the Prophet Sallallahu at the top. But in any case, two many people have said much. I'll just quote two individuals. Why I've men chosen these two is because both of them represented something. On the one hand, we have a playwright and a poet, an amusing philosopher who was concerned and consumed by the worry of the world's problems. And what was their solution? So we have a thinking, musing, playwright, poet and philosopher. On the other hand, we have a pro another person who also had a world vision, but he tried to tackle that world vision and address it and achieve it by practically conquering, legislating, and being a leader. One, the poet and philosopher, George Bernard Shaw. The other, practical conqueror, leader, and legislator, Napoleon. What did Napoleon, as a practical conqueror, say? He drew up legislation, he invaded countries, tried to be an emperor, bring about a new realization of new civilization, empire altogether. That same Napoleon says that I hope the time is not far off when I shall be able to gather all the wise and educated men of all the countries and establish a uniform regime based on the principles of the Quran which alone are true and which alone can lead men to happiness. And in the words of that musing philosopher, playwright and poet, George Bernard Shaw, again who had a world vision, he says that I have always held the religion of, I have always held the religion of Muhammad in high estimation because of its wonderful vitality. It is the only religion which appears to me to possess that assimilating capacity to the changing phase of existence which can make itself appeal to every age. I have studied him, the wonderful man, and far from being an antichrist, he must be hailed as a savior of mankind. Further, he says that I believe that if a man like him were to assume the dictatorship of the modern world, he would succeed in solving its problems in a way that would bring it the much needed peace and happiness. I have prophesied about the faith of Muhammad that it, will be accept it would be acceptable to Europe tomorrow as it is beginning to be acceptable to the Europe of today. These are the amazing words of a poet, playwright and philosopher who had a world vision and who was consumed by its problems and another practical conqueror and legislator and leader and commander like Napoleon, again, who had a world vision. If people of this caliber and capacity can see the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as being not just a role, mo ideal role model, but as a leader for the whole of mankind, not just for Europe, then as Muslims we believe in it even more so. I pray that Allah enables us to recognize the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, for what he truly is. I pray that Allah blesses the whole of mankind and the world with the beauty and the love of his message. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala abdihi wa rasulih, nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.